Thanks very much for staying with us. China is one of uh, the key members of the BRICS bloc. As the second largest economy in the world, it remains a central member within the grouping of influential economies. President Cyril Ramaphosa is set to host his Chinese counterpart, President Xi Jinping, ahead of uh, the much-anticipated gathering in Johannesburg next week. Beijing is also Pretoria's top trading partner. To help us look ahead of the summit, we are now joined by Professor John Stremlow from the Department of International Relations at the University of uh, Wits. Thanks very much uh, for joining us, Prof. We appreciate your time here on SABC News. Thank you very much. Nice to see you. All right. Like, likewise, we understand that there's a number of issues that uh, would or could or should be uh, discussed, uh, of course, at uh, the, the summit. Uh, some of the per pertinent issues we understand are uh, the issue of China, perhaps seeking to expand uh, its uh, influence uh, within not only South Africa, uh, but in, in Africa generally. And then we also hear, of course, in this the big topic that uh, Russia is hoping to overcome its uh, diplomatic um, isolation over the Ukraine war. What are your expectations and, and do you think those are sort of uh, the bigger issues uh, that will be touched upon? Well, first and foremost, it's just great that this actual summit is being held and it's being held in South Africa. So just showing, having everyone show up minus Putin is a great success for Cyril Ramaphosa and for South Africa. But bear in mind, South Africa is the smallest of the BRICS, uh, barely 2% of the economies of the BRICS and uh, even less uh, of a percent of the population. So this is uh, a case for South Africa to make the uh, visibility for Africa but the five BRIC countries, BRICS countries are all part of the G20 already. And the G20 members from the global south that might join the, the BRICS don't include any African countries. That is, so it, it's, it's hard for me to see that they will make much progress on expansion. And I don't expect uh, anything to be, take, take place with regard to currency. Yeah. And, and while we talk about uh, the issue of uh, currency, how should this, uh, in fact, um, you know, be dealt with? I mean, we're hearing uh, that uh, some of these BRICS nations don't want this huge uh, reliance um, anymore on uh, the dollar. And in fact, the group is also expected to discuss how to boost local currency fundraising and lending within uh, what's been called the New Development Bank, or so-called uh, BRICS uh, Bank. What are your views um, on, on all of this? Well, I think anything that, that creates jobs and creates trade and investment is, is great, and, uh, and particularly for Africa. But uh, bear in mind that uh, China is the number one trading partner, but it does invest relatively smaller amounts in, uh, in, in the so-called global south. Yeah. And it is, um, it is uh, becoming very cautious about its own economic situation, given that they are an aging population and they are um, uh, suffering from uh, uh, a, a probably a, a property that is about to burst. Uh, so there's a great deal of nervousness that we hear on SAFM each morning mm -hmm. about the uh, Asian economies. Uh, on the other hand, India is really poised for growth and it is growing very rapidly and it's a younger population. So um, it, it, it is a sign of, uh, of the changes going on in the, in the world community, but I don't think it's anything to get concerned about. There's no, no, no conflict at this heart of this stuff. It's all um, just trying to grow the economies for the benefits of, uh, of the member countries. Yeah. Um, we understand that, uh, you know, the leaders are also sort of um, divided or perhaps grappling with the issue of uh, the expansion, um, you know, of, of the bloc by adding uh, new members. In fact, I think I heard uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa making a joke about, you know, Saudi Arabia perhaps wanting to join and that, you know, BRICS wouldn't have to change its name because, you know, <laughs> Saudi Arabia also has uh, SA there. Um, we'd also heard about uh, Argentina, Indonesia, Egypt, uh, you know, also expressing interest, Ethiopia, I believe, as well. Um, wh what do you think about, you know, th this idea of expanding uh, the bloc? And, and, and then what, 
um, what it would mean for, for, for the West if, if that were in fact to, to happen? Oh, I think it would be uh, a, a positive step, but I just don't see it happening very easily. BRICS is still uh, a consensus-based organization. As I said before, the BRICS members are all part of the G20, and those G20 members, Argentina and Indonesia uh, and uh, uh, s several others, Turkey, um, uh, have expressed an interest in the BRICS, but there is no, no African um, economy that's large enough to justify, I mean, South Africa is a relatively large African economy, but it's still a tiny, tiny BRICS member. Now, maybe you could have friends of the BRICS uh, and the tendency that, that, that uh, uh, Durko Minister Pandor talks about and, and have uh, friends of the, of the BRICS but also have the African Union uh, be present. And they have invited, of course, the UN Secretary General and the AU Secretary General to this meeting in Johannesburg. Mm. So, you know, it, it's, it, the fact that it's happening is great, but I don't expect very much of substance to, to flow from it. And I do hope that they have an opportunity among themselves to talk about putting pressure on Russia for a peaceful solution the Ukraine war and maybe work with the West on uh, on trying to get Zelensky to bridge that gap as well. All right, uh, Prof. Shremlo, unfortunately we're out of time, but thanks very much uh, for giving us uh, your input on uh, the much-anticipated uh, BRICS summit.